Hello. Hey, it's uh, Mr. Could you spell your first and last, please? Uh, Alvin, A L V I N, Matthews, M A T, one T, H E W S. Thank you. Uh, did, uh, you know, there were some hard questions in there, it seemed like, for, for your camp. How did, uh, did you think it went? Well, we're, we're optimistic. I mean, we, we believe that the court, you know, we believe in an independent judiciary, and we believe the court will look at the record, they will look at their precedent, and they'll do what they think is right. Not necessarily what the disciplinary council thinks is right or what we think is right. I think they'll do what's right. In terms of what's right, he held the highest office as an attorney can hold. He was an attorney. He was practicing. Isn't it right that he should be ascribed some stiffer penalty than an ordinary attorney? Well, no, because his conduct had nothing to do with the practice of law, and that's our point here, that it was personal conduct, filling out a personal disclosure form, and it, it was a decision made with respect to his campaign that had nothing to do with his day-to-day -day activities as Attorney General. Do you worry, though, that his personal conduct is going to come into play here? I mean, I know you're arguing that it's not related, but it did, as the disciplinary counsel say, bring negative attention to the Attorney General's office. Well, um, we believe that the determination of the court, the decision of the court, is going to be made based on the record, you know, and that's the facts of the case that he pled to, and then also um, the precedent that the court has to follow, not any extraneous factors.